Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. Can a person who is single really trust God for his very best in life, whether it is in the choice of a mate or finding the grace of God to cope with the frustration singles often confront? If the promises of Scripture are true, finding the will of God regarding marriage has to be among the most important decisions an individual ever makes in his life. The Bible is full of promises giving us hope for direction. Quote, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go, says Psalm 32, 8. Through the prophet Jeremiah, God promised, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Scores of people, though, following in the footsteps of Abraham, lose sight of the promises and panic, thinking that they must help God out. They're the ones who usually justify marrying the first thing that comes along and later live to regret it. More mistakes in the choice of a life partner are made because we jump the gun and get ahead of God than about any other way. But my biological clock is running, I hear. Or if I don't marry him, I may never have another chance. Can you trust God to provide the right one? In his time? Dave Morrow believes you can. He was raised on the mission field in Africa, and after he completed his seminary training, he took a position in a local church, searching for the right one who could be his wife and go back to Africa with him. He kept looking the crowd over, Sunday morning to see if a new face had appeared. Finally, he came to me and asked my advice. What do you think God wants you to do with your life, I ask. I think God wants me back in Africa, he responded. Then I said, then you'd better get moving in that direction. Sedan Interior Mission, the group that Dave's parents had served with, needed him on a rather remote outstation a distance from Addis Ababa. Great chance of finding a wife there, people teased Dave. Nonetheless, that's where he went. Meanwhile, an Australian nurse felt called by God into medical missions. She was single, but hoped to meet somebody who could share her vision of missionary medicine. Nobody ever came close to being the answer. Finally, she joined the same mission Dave had joined. They told her about a medical outstation work in a pretty remote area outside of Addis Ababa. Her family and friends told her, Hey, if you go there, you'll end up being an old maid for sure. But putting the will of God above finding the right man, she packed and went to the mission field. You guessed it. They met, fell in love, and married. Both of them could have so easily missed God's best for their lives had they gotten ahead of God. John and Shannon Hazlitt would agree. After several years of short-term missions, both who were single agreed to go to Kenya where they met. Where are you from, John asked Shannon. She replied, the same town where he lived. Really, he said, surprised. What's your address there? She told him. Amazed, he replied, well, that's where I've been living too. Believe it or not, they both had lived in the same apartment complex, in the same city, on the same street, but had to go 7,000 miles away to meet each other, fall in love, marry, and have a family. God's will can be trusted. They agree. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines. Guidelines.